So to continue from where we left off, I've renamed all of my you know, line types, my fill patterns, my text styles. I've created the labels I need. I've placed my parameters for the most part. I didn't finish all my consultants, but enough to give you guys an idea. So since each parameter has to be unique in its naming, you know, I'll have consultant one, all these parameters, consultant two, three, four, etc. So um, you would need to create those all as shared parameters and then add them to your title block. Same thing is true as of all of these. Now I still have some additional cleanup to do because I've got a lot of times I have like text under these. So you're going to want to go through and filter and make sure that we don't have any text under here. Let's filter these because I want to get rid of all those text items that I don't need that the ones that are going to be replaced by parameters so we'll get rid of all of this stuff you know all of these are good just make sure you know that they've been renamed so 1164 so let's see if I've got one that's 1164 and you can see that every time it brought in a new type it just numbered it you know accordingly so you know, even if we went through and renamed some of these, I'd still have extraneous ones that don't belong. So make sure that you get rid of those. So I'm going to go ahead and rename to 1164. Okay. So we're going to finish doing that kind of cleanup. So again, you're going to get rid of anything that doesn't belong in here. You should also make sure that you get rid of a lot of these extra lines that we don't need since we've done these as filled regions um, and it functions differently than it does in AutoCAD. We've got a bunch of extra lines in here that we can get rid of. So make sure that you filter those out and then just delete them. And you'll notice that I'm just going to do a window here around some of this when I filter that it actually breaks it up into what came across as layers you know from AutoCAD turns into lines inside of Revit so you know you can actually go through and filter which lines you want to erase or you know modify or whatever the case may be so just kind of a heads up for that and those will show up under object styles so on your manage tab if you expand lines you'll see all those different line types that came in and you know what their designation is. Okay, so I finally got everything cleaned up and I am going to copy this information into a new file. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start a new title block. And again, same size as you started with before. And then I'm going to flip back to my other screen and we're just going to window and select these items. I don't need the border again because that's already part of the new title block. Um, and just kind of an FYI, I would change your selection color. You can do that through options. Um, because parameters come in blue when they're selected, if everything turns blue you can't tell what's a parameter and what's text. So this makes life a little bit easier. And that's just on the graphics tab. So just change it to something other than blue so that you can, you know, make sure you know what you're selecting as well as being able to define the difference between text and parameters. So now I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard. I'm going to flip to my other title block that I've started and then we're going to paste it to the current view. Okay, so this is our actual final title block that we're going to use. Now, these are set to be no plot lines um, from the CAD file, which we can't really do the same way in Revit. And these were defined, you know, to kind of break up the sheet for details. So if we want to see those, we're going to want to control those with the visibility parameter. So we're not going to want to see them all the time. We just want to see them sometimes on certain sheets. So if you select them all, off to the right of visible, you've got a little box and we're going to add a parameter 
and we'll call this detail grid. And we want it instance based and whatever group you want to put it under we'll say OK. So now once we load this into our project we'll be able to turn that on and off on different sheets as we need it. Okay, there's probably a few more things that you'll also need to control with visibility parameters, for example, your status and so on. So anything that you want to be able to have the ability to turn on and off inside the project, you'll need to apply a visibility parameter to those. And if you want to go ahead and change um, your object style colors right now, since we still came over with the same colors from CAD, you know, just go into object styles and set those to whatever colors you want them to be reference planes and reference lines. I'll go ahead and leave and I'm going to leave the no plot um, at this color. Again, this is something that you can modify once it is in you know, the project so you can change it there as well. Now there's one thing I did miss and that was the line pattern. Now anytime you see a line pattern that says import you know it came from a CAD file. So I would prefer that you go in and rename those um, or ideally clean them up before you you know copy them in here but again that's just part of that cleanup process okay so to clean up that pattern name in here we'll just go ahead and rename it but if you end up with a lot of line styles that come in from the CAD file that can cause problems um, in your project so kind of be aware of that so we'll just rename it and I've already looked at it so I know that the spacing is one quarter inch so I tend to name it you know what the spacing is for your reference in the future and if I were to go back into object styles you'll see that it's been renamed in here as well okay so now we're ready to purge um, and I know we started with a brand new template um, for this title block but we're gonna purge anyways you'll notice that there's still things in here that I don't need we're gonna do a save as And this is our E1 title block. And if I look at options, you'll notice that compact is already selected. And if you wanted to change the view, which in a title block isn't really a big deal, you could do that as well. And we'll go ahead and save. Now there's just one final thing that hasn't been taken care of. If I look down here, you'll notice that I have my revision um, area, so the, the location for my revision schedule. The revision information is actually a type of schedule, so if I go to my view tab, I can actually create the revision schedule with whatever information you want in there. So for this one, they just have, I'm assuming, number I would probably add description and date and then it's up to you anything else that you want. So we'll go ahead and place those. And then if we go back to the sheet, so you'll notice that revision number, description and date, we may not want to see this information in the schedule, so you know it's just kind of up to you how you want to view this. Okay, so if we don't want to see this information, we're going to want to modify it. So you'll notice I couldn't see any of this information until I clicked on schedules and then revision schedule. So go ahead and figure out how you want it to look and in this case I really don't want to see anything. We'll just fill in that information. I don't want to see um, the title or the headers. So just go ahead and turn those off. And then we'll go back to the sheet and we'll just drag this over here. Okay, so you'll want to position this and probably adjust it a bit. It makes it confusing, obviously, with everything turned off, but once you get it positioned, I would probably come back in at that point and turn everything off that you don't want to see. And then we'll go ahead and save again. And then now you're ready to take this into your template. Okay, so this is just a base template that I just now started. So what we're going to do is go switch back to our title block and we're going to load it into our project. So 
template one is what I want to load it into and I haven't saved my template yet it's telling me this because I'm in a view where I can't place a sheet you know a title block so just go ahead and OK past it and then we'll create a new sheet based off of our title block and I just want to point this out I have another blog on this that I will refer you guys to but when we select this you'll notice a bunch of red question marks and that's because those are shared parameters that have not been introduced to this template so you will need to go in and add those to your you know project template before you'll be able to modify these so again I will refer you to another blog that I've got that goes through that process I hope this was helpful and thanks for tuning in